Hey guys, Sean here at the Gardener Center. So typically I talk to you guys about plants. I'm gonna do something a little different this week and I'm gonna talk about things we keep our plants in. Um, specifically to address a question we get asked here at the nursery all the time, and it's a super important question, which is, can I keep my pots outside all winter? Um, unfortunately, there is not a simple or an easy answer to this question. It really depends on what your pot's made out of. It depends on whether or not there's soil in it or if it's empty, where and how you're using it on your property. Lots of things factor in. So what I'm gonna do this week, I'm gonna take a few minutes to explain why our pots are getting damaged during the wintertime because it's not just cold temperatures. I am gonna talk about some different common materials that your pots may be made out of and discuss their varying degrees of durability as it pertains to being outdoors during the winter. And then I'm gonna talk about some steps and some tips that you can take to ensure that your pots are still in one piece next spring, so stick around. All right, so like I said, it's not that it gets cold here in the winter time that's causing our problems with our pots outdoors during the winter. The, the issue is that it doesn't stay cold here in the winter time. If we were gardening in a more northern climate, like we all lived in Buffalo or Minneapolis, and we were gardening and using these types of pots outdoors, we'd probably have less, less problems keeping them outdoors during the winter time because it gets cold there and it stays cold. Our temperatures tend to fluctuate up and down over the winter here in, in the part of the world that we garden in, and that's where our, we're running into trouble with our containers outdoors. Um, if you've lived in Connecticut through one winter, you've definitely heard our local meteorologists talk about a January thaw. Um, and January thaw is exactly what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about when it's below freezing for two weeks, and then all of a sudden we have three or four days where it's in the upper 40s and it's raining. And you know, you come home from work at five o'clock, it's 45 degrees and raining. You wake up the next morning and walk out the door at seven o'clock and it's sunny and it's 12 degrees outside. Um, that, that happens here and that's where our damage is occurring with our pots. And depending on what they're made of, some of them handle that a lot better than others. So I'm gonna talk about a few different materials here and then I'm gonna share some tips with you to help keep them in one piece. Um, I'm gonna start with terracotta. Um, terracotta is a you know classic look. It's definitely the least expensive of all the pot materials you could purchase, usually even less expensive than plastic. It's a great choice if you're growing plants that need good drainage and don't like to be wet for very long because the, the material is very porous, so it allows, um, allows the pot to dry out pretty quickly. Unfortunately, that same porousness is its death knell in the winter time because like, I let this little pot soak in some water for a bit before we started and you can see where it's darker than the rest of it and that's because it's so porous it absorbs water into itself um what happens when i when we have that situation i just described it absorbs water into itself when it's in the 40s 12 hours later it's 10 degrees below freezing the pot thaws out again and it literally just crumbles to dust so terracotta, although pretty, um, terracotta definitely falls into the column of pots that should not be left outside over the winter. These should be brought indoors, unheated garage is fine, storage shed, or even if you leave them outdoors, just under a covered area where they're not getting wet because the, the, the pots absorb the moisture and that's, what the, that's what, where the damage occurs. Terracotta, always inside or under cover. Closely related to the terracotta is this beautiful glazed um, pot um, which is also terracotta a um, nice thing about these is the glaze makes them impervious to um, moisture on the outside unfortunately glazed pots terracotta pots like this one are not finished on the inside and even worse they're never finished on the bottom so even though this is, you know, this is a higher grade of terracotta than this one here. Um, it's been fired at a much higher temperature in the kiln, so it's still, so it's stronger. It's not nearly as fragile as these little guys, but it's still porous. So even if, you know, even outside with the glaze, that interior is going to absorb water. Um, and the bottom is actually going to wick moisture out of the ground. So this guy here is more durable than the regular terracotta, but still, you still have to be careful with these. And I always recommend 
emptying and moving your glazed pots to um, a dry area where they're not in the elements over the winter time. A couple steps you can take to keep them out if you want to try, which I'm going to talk about in a bit. But ideally, these should be brought indoors during the winter and emptied. Um, from there, we're going to move on to cast stone. Cement, concrete, cast stone, call it what you like. Um, these guys can definitely be left outside over the winter. Um, critical thing with these, though, is you want to make sure that the drainage is open. Because what happens so often with, with these types of pots is the drain hole gets plugged. And then um, it forms like a little cork of soil in the bottom. And then when we get rain and then it freezes, the water has, if it's not draining out properly, it just expands in the pot. And what happens if you put a pole and spring bottle of water in your freezer and don't dump a little bit out first, it cracks. Um, the water expands and it breaks. Same thing's gonna happen with your pot. I love to with these guys, actually with all pots, but when you're potting up a pot like this, you wanna make sure that drainage hole is clear. And same thing with these guys here. Um, you could use a piece of weed block fabric. Everybody has that kicking around in their garage usually. Um, coffee filters also work. Um, and what this is gonna do, I like to put this right on the bottom when you make sure your drain hole is clear. Then add a little bit of, a little bit of gravel and then your soil. Um, that fabric is gonna let the water get out, but it's not, gonna let your, um, it's not gonna let your soil get into that drain hole and plug it up like a little cork. It's especially a problem if, you're, um, if your pot's on a really flat surface, because then the soil can just get in there and, and sit there. And the same thing will happen in the winter time if we get the freeze thaw, you'll get water into that drain hole that'll, um, that'll clog up and form a cork also. So weed, weed block fabric is super important. Um, moving on, Something we sell lots of here are these um, polyethylene and fiberglass composite pots. These can stay out all side all winter. Um, these can stay outside all winter with soil in them, with plants. A couple steps you gotta take to make sure they stay good over the winter. I'm gonna talk about that in a second. But best bet for not having to worry about your pots outside is definitely a polyethylene or fiberglass material. And before I move on to our tips, I got Father Rabbit over here. You might be wondering about the rabbit. Um, so garden art, statuary, things like bird baths. You know, a lot of people in the winter time will, um, they'll empty out the bird bath top and flip it over um, so it doesn't crack. But these things are, ter are terrible to leave outside during the winter time if you can avoid doing that, um, bring them in. If you can get these guys inside, they're gonna last twice as long. Um, what happens with this type of thing, and a lot of people put their bird bath or their garden statuary directly on soil or directly on mulch. And what'll happen when the air is dry and it's above freezing, they'll actually wick moisture out of the soil into themselves. And then when it freezes, it cracks. Um, same thing with the birdbath base. You know, everybody worries about the birdbath top, but the birdbath base, if it's sitting on a soil or mulch, you wanna get that in. I have a birdbath at home, a cast stone birdbath that I've had for 12 years. And every year it goes into my basement in the end of October and comes out in the beginning of April and it looks like the day I got it 12 years ago. I mean, do I love dragging it in and out of the basement every year? No, but it's, um, it looks like the day I bought it. So garden art, statuary, fountains definitely should be brought inside over the winter. Um, next up, I'm gonna talk about some things you can do to make sure your pots are gonna hold up over the winter, so stay tuned. All right, so we already talked about the importance of keeping your drainage hole clear and open if you're gonna be leaving your pots outside over the winter. And that's not only true in the winter time. Um, when you're doing your pots for the spring and summer, you wanna make sure you do the same thing because getting a drainage hole plugged up in the winter is gonna destroy your pot. But having a drainage hole plugged up going into the growing season is gonna kill your plants. So you wanna keep that in mind for the springtime too when you're doing your pots. Um, so we're gonna make sure the drainage hole is empty. Super important thing for the winter time. If you're leaving your cast stone, if you're gonna try leaving your glaze out and even these fiberglass polyethylene pots, you need to get them up off the ground. Um, like I said, a lot of times, even if they're draining well, you know, because of that freeze thaw, the water will get out, it'll get underneath the pot and it'll freeze before it has time to dry. So getting them up off the ground a little bit is gonna save you a lot of troubles. Um, you could use little pieces of lumber, you know, half inch, three quarter inch lumber, a couple strips, put them under the pot for the winter. Um, there are things like pot toes, pot feet. These are plastic. You can get them in cement. You can get them in terracotta. They go underneath the pot and just elevate them up off the ground. And you're really just creating 
an opening underneath the pot so that that water has a place to drain out but more importantly that it has a place to drain out and hopefully evaporate before it freezes um, these are just a couple of simple things you can do if your pot are out on your patio exposed to the elements in the backyard you'll need to do that if you have cement pots or cast or glazed pots on your porch or polyethylene pots on your porch where there's a roof you don't have to lift them up off the ground it's really an issue if they're getting exposed to rain and snow and the elements over the winter time so um, keep these things in mind and hopefully all our pots will be in one piece next spring we'll see you next time <laughs>